Hello friends I am Shagnik and I welcome you all to online learning today I am going to discuss about the previous year practice questions of java for infitq 2023 batch so let us start okay but before that if you have not join our telegram channel for infitq and hack with infi please join here for all the updates and for the updates for whichever exam you have please follow our youtube channel now without wasting much time let us move to the first question in the first question is given consider the code snippet given below okay so whenever you are seeing a code snippet always start from the main method okay now it is given customer obj that is a reference variable of the obj is there a reference variable of the customer class is there and a new object is created a new object of customer class is created which is referred by the object obj now here again a new object of customer class is created which is referred by the reference variable obj1 now in the third line only reference variable of the customer class is there no object is created object is only created when we use the new keyword and assign a memory okay this is also object 3 this is also a reference variable of the customer class which is pointing to the obj object of customer class okay so so we have two objects what are they obj and obj1 okay and they are also the reference variable so how many reference variable are there customer obj is one reference variable customer obj1 is second reference variable customer obj2 is a third reference variable and customer obj3 is the fourth reference variable so there are four reference variable in which customer obj and customer obj1 reference variable are pointing to the object of customer class so here we have two objects and four reference variable okay so your answer will be two objects and four reference variable hope you have understood and if you have any problem tell me in the comment section now let us move to the next question okay it is given consider the problem size and n find the worst case time complexity of the following algorithm okay what it is given if num1 is greater than num2 then a for loop is there counter it will be counter n is missing counter 1 is equal to 1 if counter 1 is less than equal to n then counter 1 is equal to counter 1 into 2 whenever you see there is a into or divide in a for loop then it will have a time complexity of order of log n always remember when there is a into or divide in a loop then your its complexity will be log n and it is so for is ending here print num1 is greater than num2 then for ends then else for again a for loop is starting counter 2 is equal to 1 counter 2 less than equal to n counter 2 is counter 2 plus 1 whenever there is plus minus that is increment or decrement always remember it is of order n okay print num2 is greater than num1 then end for end if okay so either this loop will execute or this loop will execute because after if if the first condition satisfy then this loop will executed otherwise this loop will execute so it is given find the worst case time complexity among order of log n and order of n which is worse order of n is more worse so our worst case time complexity will be order of n so your option is a okay hope you have understood now let us move to the third question it is given 
consider the code given below which is written in the file demo.java in the file demo.java this code is written so what is there a class book is there then is class definition then class demo is there then public static void main that is the main function and the program is ended here now see what it is given how many dot class files will be generated for the above code and which class out of the two demo or book will be loaded in the main memory first when executed so we have two class files so we have two class so both will have their dot class files one will be of book and another will be of demo but which will be executed first or which will be loaded in the main memory first obviously demo why because it has the main method in it so the class which have the main method in it always remember it will be loaded first so dot two dot class files will be created and demo will be executed first so option is answer is option a hope you have understood now let us move to the next question now what it is given what is the output of the following code snippet so we have to find the output okay a public class question is given then public static void main the main function integer variable is over 22 another variable 7 result okay three variables are there then string str is equal to 1 string another str is equal to 2 now it is given result var into another var divided by another var so how we will execute it see we have to apply the board mass rule and board mass rule says bracket first then of then d for division or here you can say modulus m for multiplication a for addition then subtraction so divide will be done first if you do multiply first then your answer can be wrong so another where divided by another where so 22 divided by 22 it will come as no sorry another where is 7 so 7 divided by 7 it will be 1 and then we have to multiply with where what is where where is 22 so 22 into 1 it will become 22 so what will be the value of result result will have a value of 22 now it is given if result is less than 22 then print sister no then print str but our value is 22 so it will come to the else part and we will print another str so what is the value of another str it is 2 so two will be printed so your option will be d two will be printed hope you have understood now let us move to the next question now it is given which of the following statements is true with respect to java language being platform independent so we know java language is platform independent it is saying which of them is true the code in the java file is platform independent no it is wrong the code is platform independent so we can run any java file or any java code in any of the systems or different platforms that is we can run the same java code in windows in mac in linux etc etc so it is wrong the jvm is same across all operating systems it is again wrong because jvm is platform dependent always remember jvm is platform independent because jvm is platform dependent as jvm is platform independent it becomes java code platform independent because we have jvm different jvm for different operating systems so when we load jvm in different operating systems 
we can run the java class file the same java class file in any of the operating system that is why jvm is different for different operating system so it is also wrong then it is written a java program written in a machine with windows operating system cannot be executed on a machine having linux operating system though java is installed accordingly it is false because we can run a same java code which is written in windows operating system in linux operating system also so we can we can run any java program in any operating system so it is also known now at last is given a dot class file can be run in any operating system where java is installed yes that is why java is platform independent so your option is d always remember java is platform independent but jvm is platform dependent as jvm is platform dependent that is why java becomes platform independent hope you have understood and remember because this question can be asked in your interview also okay now let us move to the next question which data structure may give overflow error even though current number of elements in it is less than this size its answer is q we all know this is the ad disadvantage of q that is why circular concept of circular q has come why it gives overflow error even the size is not filled because ja q has two ends one is the front end and one is the rear end so we can add files only from the rear end only so even if the uh, in if if the size is 4 and the fourth block is filled even if the first three blocks are empty because maybe you have deleted the three elements even if these three are empty and you have element present here your queue will show it is full so this is a disadvantage of queue even if the queue is empty partially though then also it will see it is full if the element is present in the last block so your answer will be q that is why to remove this disadvantage we have familiar we have come with the concept of circular q hope most of you know this answer can a class be compiled without a constructor many will say yes a class can be co uh, compiled without a constructor because many a times we don't use a constructor in our program but no you are wrong we know a concept that if you don't write any constructor our java program give us a default constructor and it give default constructor before our class is compiled that is constructor can be defined or you can define your class without a constructor but before compilation java will provide a default constructor so without a constructor class cannot be compiled so it is false so again i am repeating yes in your class you can you can you if you think you cannot write uh, you can write a class without you can write a program without a constructor but java will provide a default constructor before your class is compiled so always remember a class cannot be compiled without a constructor this question again can be asked in interview so always remember a class cannot be compiled without a constructor so it is false because java will provide a default constructor before a class is compiled so your answer is false hope you have understood what is the output of the following code snippet okay let us see it is given public class texter 
public static void main string args okay int loop is equal to 0 loop less than 5 loop plus plus okay a for loop is there if so at first loop is 0 if loop greater than 2 no if loop greater than 4 no the system dot out print and loop okay so 0 will be printed same way then it will be increment to 1 so this statement is again wrong this is again wrong so 1 will be printed same for 2 then whenever it will become 3 this statement will become right so continue means it will skip it and again will return to loop so 3 will not be printed then the, it will be incremented at, and it will become 4 so 4 is greater than 2 again it will move here okay then uh, then the loop will become 5 but and the condition of the loop will fail because it will be checked up to 5 so it will come out of the loop okay it will come here and the program will be ended so your answer will be 0 1 and 2 hope you have understood so option will be a 0 1 and 2 now let us move to the next question the ninth question it is given class item okay public string item id string item name protected float item price private int item discount okay public item uh, uh public item this a uh, constructor is created this dot item it okay what it is asking identify the access specifier of the data member item name so item name has no access specifier it, it is an easy question you know whenever a variable has no access specifier or a data member access specifier is not mentioned then it by default takes the default access specifier so your answer will be what will be identify the access specifier of the data member item name it will be default option d now we are moving to the last question of today okay so it is given what is the output of the following code snippet always start as i've already told always start from the main function now it is given bill bill obj is equal to new bill 10 so uh, bill obj reference variable is pointing to the uh, object of the bill class okay we are providing it with 10 so a constructor will be called uh, pub, this constructor will be called an item price will become 10 because it is an instant variable it will be initialized and it will become 10 okay now with the build.obj object we are accessing the item price variable we have just initialized it so it will print 10 okay then with the help of build obj object we are uh, accessing or we are calling the display method okay it will come here and int item price is equal to 20 so int item price here is the local variable okay now we are printing item price so item price which is the local variable here its value will be printed here only so the value will be 20 so 20 will be printed so what will be our output 10 then 20 okay so round answer will be 10 and 20 hope you have understood all the question and you have liked the session if you have liked the session please like our video share it with your friends and if you have any problem tell me in the comment section i will see you the next day okay bye thank you